You know, we don't really know a lot about the Magi, except that they came from the East. They were called wise men. Sometimes we uh, was called them the three kings. Probably were not kings. Uh, most likely they were astrologers uh, from the East, maybe Persia. We don't really know um, exactly where, and it's not that important or exactly where they came from. But they saw something. They saw a star, a light. And a lot of people are trying to figure out exactly was it three planets that kind of came in close, all kinds of things like that. There was a light. Right, and so that I wouldn't worry too much about exactly how that light was there, but there was a light, and that's what's important. And it leads them away. And here where it gets a little tricky. We should always remember that empires come and go, but the church endures. Always remember that. The church endures. Tyrants don't live that long. At least not in, in the time of, we think about God's time, etc. Herod, he's already afraid. He's deeply troubled. And we know, of course, what he is going to, to do. And it's been that way through the whole history. So we shouldn't be too... Uh, surprise that they would happen, that you know, the, the Herods of the world will fall away. Rome, most powerful nation uh, in that time, they tried to get rid of Jesus. That didn't work. The barbarians that came from far, far east, that didn't stop the church. French revolutionaries, they didn't stop the church. The uh, medieval Islamic caliphates, they didn't stop the church. On and on. The Nazis and the communists, they did not stop the church. So for the last 2,000 years, the church has prevailed. We've got to keep remembering that. Sometimes in this, when we have the wars and all sorts of things like that, it seems like, oh, but, you know, the church will endure. And the same question that they ask Herod, that question is being asked today. Where is the newborn king of the Jews? Where is this king? The Feast of the Epiphany has always been a feast of, of light and manifestation. God is now being made known not just to a small group of Jewish people 2,000 years ago, but for the whole world. So where is the king of the Jews? Well, we have to kind of think about that. Where is it? We say, well, it's, it's here. Well, where is here? Where is here? It's supposed to be right here. It's supposed to be right here. In each of one of us who will call Jesus our Lord and our Savior. And look at all the saints for the past 2,000 years who have stood up to the things of the culture, tyrants, to those who would want to get rid of faith. And some of our ancestors are great heroes. They died for that answer to that question. Where is the king of the Jews? It should be right here. 
how we talk and how we live, how we share our lives with one another over and over again. Now, we don't bring the same gifts that the uh, Magi brought, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. You know, the gold represents our talents, our efforts, our support of, of, of our church. That's, that's the gold. Our prayers and our worship are the, uh, in, 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 um, the, the incense. Uh, and then our sufferings, our sorrows, the myrrh. So they have the symbol. Those gifts are still being given, or should be given, let me put it that way, as the same gold, frankincense, and myrrh that the wise men brought. So what we have to do, uh, if we're going to make and help God uh, change the, the face of the earth, is we have to become stars. We have to become stars. And I don't mean Britney Spears, okay? Okay, I'm not talking about that kind of star, all right? We have to be the star. We have to be the one to whom the world is coming. By our kindness. I don't know how many people uh, did as, as a uh, New Year's resolution to say, I'm going to, I resolve this year to be kinder. And um, if you don't think you have to do that, ask somebody you live with. They know. They know. So that's one thing we could do. Make a resolution. I'm going to be kinder. I'm going to be braver. I resolve to be more brave. Talk about God. To share my faith. To stand out in the field and be the one that people see. All kinds of things like that. There's many ways that we can be a star. And, and, you know, there's all kinds of billboards all through this city, okay? Uh, really, <laughs> sometimes you walk, uh, you drive down a couple of uh, streets, and my goodness, why are all those signs up there? And you can't read them anyway, because you're driving, and, or you shouldn't be. You should be driving, not riding, uh, looking at the signs. But people keep putting the signs up, and we keep looking at them. Not that kind of a sign. But today, it's one of those things we do, have been done for several years now, is encouraging all our families to chalk your door. We have bottles of water, holy water, and we have some chalk and a little prayer back there on how to do that. And, you know, if we're going to put things out where people can see, and I hope you will do this, I really hope you will do this, is take that chalk and on the... Uh, on the top of your door. Now, if it's a white door, we have white chalk. If, if you have a white door, then use a, a, a brown or a different color because you won't see it if it's on white on white. And you just put that, you know, the, 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 the numbers of the year, 20, 24, and then a cross, and then uh, an M, excuse me, a C, an M, and each would teach them, and they'll have the instructions there for you. And the point of that is, it's, you know, we, we honor our Lord in so many different ways. So you put the chalk on, and when you see the, the CMB, the three letters, so, and it traditionally has a couple of different meanings, uh, Casper, Malkiar, and Balthasar. Those are traditional names of the... Uh, uh, of, of the wise men. Now, we don't know that absolutely for sure, but that's some of the ancient writings, and so 
There's no reason. I mean, it sounds like the names that people in the Persia and up around there, they would have names like that. And they bring the gifts. The other understanding of that particular little CMB is Christus Monsiorum uh, Benedictat. That's the Latin. God bless this house. God bless this house. So that every time somebody comes into your house and they say, what is that? Well, we believe that Christ blesses this house and the people who live here. And we're striving to be a light to the world. And you just talk language like that. They may never come back. But that's their choice. Our choice should be, this is who we are, and this is what we do. We should not be a people who are afraid to show our faith, to hide our faith, just to kind of not talk about it at all. We should do that. We should let people know. And just periodically during the year, you just kind of put the chalk on because it will, with weather and water and things like that, it'll, it'll fade. And you just keep doing this all year long until about October. And then you don't refresh it anymore. You let it kind of wind down. And then next January, you do it again. The chalk the door. Let people know what kind of a house you are entering. And what, what a simple little thing like that. And every time we go into the house, there it is, there's, there it is. Christ bless this house. And to become the light. When you come to communion today, and you receive Jesus. You receive the light of the world. You receive that newborn king into your very body. Body, blood, soul, divinity of the newborn king. The creator of the world. The light of the world. And I would suggest, no, I will challenge you. Do everything you can to become what you eat. Become the light of the world. If we're going to conquer the darkness, and there's a lot of darkness out there, we have to be the light. We have to, we have to be the light. Not just some God up in the sky. But right here in this earth, right in your very home, to be the light, bring light into the world. I challenge you today to be, become what you will receive. <laughs>